Good afternoon, my friends, my fellow friends, my beloved friends, Mr. Matius. I'm sorry that uh, I just finished the recording because uh, my laptop are my laptop is in trouble, and the motherboard got something there, including the voice card and so on. So, uh, in on this opportunity, I would like to share my understanding about teaching materials in EIL. It's from Ayamat Suda. At first, I don't really understand about EIL. So, yeah, let's try to continue then. Actually, what is EIL? Based on the journal, EIL is English as International Language. So, based on this understanding, uh, English goes to every country beyond limits, uh, people, race, languages, local languages, national languages. So it goes to every sides of the language learning. One obvious way of the language teaching material is, is about contribute to foreign language teaching is about source of input including Brown in 1995 he acknowledges their significance by positioning it as one of six components of a language curriculum along with needs analysis goals objectives Testing, teaching, and program evaluation. In foreign language classroom, regardless of the language, textbook and other teaching materials play an important role. So, as we know that teaching materials is not only books, it can be websites, can be printed materials such as magazines, newspaper and so on one obvious way the teaching material of material contribute to foreign languages teaching is a source of input it means that the source is playing a great role for teaching language teaching so besides providing like valuable language input teaching materials also express reinforce and construct a certain view of the world. A goal of teaching EIL is to prepare the learners to use English to become part of the globalized world, which is linguistically and culturally diverse. Thus, EIL courses naturally strive to incorporate such diversity and to represent English as a pluralistic and dynamic entity rather than a monolithic and static one. As we understand that English has become a worldwide language, so it, it, it use it is used to almost every single character or ways in our daily life. A goal of teaching EIL is to prepare the learners to use English to become part of the globalized world. So, uh, it it can be used or seen in every single factors in our life. On this uh, journal, 
focuses on the evaluation, selection, and development of teaching material in EIL classroom. So this teaching material can be defined as a systematic description of the technique and exercise to be used in the classroom, especially classroom teaching. Next, traditional practices and principle. Traditional ELT, English language teaching, uh, material, however, especially textbook and other materials specifically developed develop for classroom use, tend to focus on the standard varieties from the UK and US. What this suggests is that EIL classroom, one of the important goals is to develop awareness of and sensitivity toward differences, inform users and users, and learn to respect or at least tolerate those differences. EIL teaching materials must support and promote this kind of goals. One characteristic of English use in international setting is its heterogeneity. Although, according to Kana Karaja in 2004, page 199, English is unique in that is language with multiple norms and diverse systems. The worldwide spread of English through migration, colonization, globalization has resulted in the institutionalization of the language in multiple countries, where the language has become nativized and a new norm for the localized English has emerged, according to Kahru in 1988. Principle and principle practices and principle for an EIL framework. The appropriateness of level, levels, integration of skill being taught in the class, and quality and amount of exercises are some examples of questions teacher ask, regardless regardless of their commitment to bring in the EIL perspective to their pedagogy. Overall, material published especially for classroom use as opposed to the authentic material individual teachers choose to bring in tend to be based on and reinforce a common assumption in the field of ELT that English is the language of inner circle, particularly that the US and the UK and the reason for learning English is to interact with native English speakers. It's often to equate it with those from the UK and the US. So, uh, probably, in some times ago, the English language teaching probably focused on native life. So, it goes to the inner circle. But, Current representation of English has the language of in the inner circle speakers, as already stated, also fail to acknowledge the increased use of English among non-native speakers of English. So, as we understand before that English has been an international language that is uh, widely used in every single room in our life. So we can assume that English belongs to the inner circle and that others are expected to conform to inner circle norms. That's according to Matsuda 2003. It means that um, English has its own norms that probably needs to adapt to the uh, to the locals 
norms for example when english use is used in indonesia so it it can be developed using the local content in indonesia so uh, the appropriateness of level introduction of skill being taught in class and quality among the size is actually the one who which need to be developed here okay criteria for evaluating teaching materials so we may make it short into five terms five categories the one is variety of english it means that multiple varieties of english are used successfully in international communication context in english which implies that we have a wide variety of Englishes to choose from when selecting an, selecting an instructional model for, under, for English instru, instruction. For example, in Hong Kong, ideal materials would expose learners to kind of Hong Kong English use in business as well as for social purposes. You can see it in Matsuda and Friedrich in 2011. Okay, next is provide adequate exposure to other varieties of English and raise enough awareness about the linguistic diversity of English. However, students must understand that the variety they are learning is one of many and may differ from what future interlocutor use. It means, as uh, I'm trying to explain before that English can be used for local needs. So it has soul with the local basic need, while on the other hand, English is international language. So there are several ways to increase several ways to increase students' awareness of English. Varieties using appropriate material. One is to use prepackaged teaching material that already include multiple varieties of English. For example, series that usually company textbook may include samples of different varieties of English. The listening section of the current TOEIC test of English of foreign international communication test includes speakers from Britain, Australia, New Zealand, and North America. While the selection is still limited to inner circle variety, this change in the TOEIC test to make it possible and even desirable to introduce variety other than American, British, English, even in the test preparation courses, which tend to be rigid about norms and standards. Next, it will be the represent of variety speakers. The worldwide spread of English has also changed the demographic, demographic of English users. English is not only used exclusively among native sp English speakers or even between native and non-native English speakers anymore, but also often for communication exclusively communication exclusively among non-native speakers of English. It is said by Cradle in 1997, Smith in 1983, and Widdowson in 1994. Accordingly, the assumption that non-active English speakers learn English is to in order to communicate with not speak English speaker who does not always hold true anymore. So, in conclusion, success of ownership may be fostered through the variety of ways, from having an opportunity to use English for authentic communication to meeting someone with a similar background using English effectively to have explicit discussion in it. 
Next, uh, cultures represented. Language classes often incorporate the teaching of culture, culture as a part of their content because language and culture are considered inseparably. Language construct and reflect culture. Rules about appropriateness of language use are culture specific. For example, in course for ESP, English for specific purposes. In international context, the content of the teaching material is natu naturally tied to the specific purpose for which students are prepared. For example, textbook on English for international business may include reading on principle of cross-cultural cross business negotiation or cultural differences in business ethics. So, the first source of cultural content is called global cultures, culture, which includes topics that cut, cut across national boundaries and are, irre, re, and are relevant to the global society as a whole. There is a challenge, of course, that who those interlocutors may be is unknown. And it would be impossible to touch upon every single country and culture within each country. One way to address this challenge is to strategically diversify the content to include countries and regions from various parts of the world in the teaching material. The next one is appropriateness for local context. According to McKay, in 2002, another issue that has been overlooked in the past but has attracted more attention in recent years is the question of the appropriateness of curriculum, methodology, and teaching materials for local teaching contexts. Each culture has a way of teaching and learning that is historic historically situated in the local context. Somehow, while well, users often have a few of teaching material, especially published, published or printed material, as an objective collection of information, they are indeed a cultural artifact that represent and promote certain values, whether intentional or intentional. There is stated by Hino in 1988. Introducing unfamiliar values, however, requires some careful planning and responses. For, ex for instance, a mixed gender dialogue in a professional context may seem strange or unrealistic to students in a society where gender roles are rigidly defined and clearly divided. When, and thus may require some explanation. But we also need to underline that it is also important that the content of teaching material is relatable and meaningful to learners, as educational research suggests that students learn better when they can relate to the material and find the material real and meaningful to themselves. It was stated by Howard in 2003, Letson and Billings in 19, 8, 1993. So, there are steps for supplementing material. It goes to needs of learners. In most cases, teachers need to supplement the core textbook. The above criteria may help material writer create materials that are more applicable for EIL teaching. But no textbook perfect enough works for everyone without any modification because the goal of student and the avail availability, 
availability of other kind of teacher resources vary from one context to another. So, it goes to before evaluating the teaching materials, the learner need must be revisited. A need analyze, analysis should have been completed as part of the curriculum development, but in some cases, it may need some careful re-examination. Once the needs are identified, any gap between the learner's needs and what the material provides can be explored by asking further questions. Does it expose students to English variety? They are likely to be exposed to in a real situation where they use English for international communication. Or does it represent English users that are similar to the learners themselves as well as their future interlocutors? Once the gaps are identified, the materials that will fill the gaps can be found. Advancement in instructional media, including the internet, allow teachers to easily access various kinds of materials that can be used to support teaching and learning. There are some possible resources or source for supplemental materials. For example, audiovisual it can be found in CDs, DVDs, audio and movie clips, which is available on the internet. Or maybe uh, printed media, like newspaper and news scripts. Or maybe official website, it can be found in country cities or international organization, etc. It also can be found in personal websites, blogs, or social networking sites. As conclusion, this chapter introduces a series of questions one can use to assess how accurately and comprehensively the material represents the character characteristic of EIL use. Notes. The term word English is used to refer to varieties of English found worldwide today, including not only new Englishes from post colonial countries, but also those from the inner and expander circles, stated by Kahru in 1985. Circle model. It also stated by Kathleen, 1985, the inner circle, where English is acquired as the first language of the majority of its population and used as the main, dominant language of the society. The outer circle, where English is acquired as an additional language and performs specific function in domestic communication while coexisting with the local language. The third Native English language, native English speakers, refers to people who have learned the language as the first language and use and use it as the dominant language. Non-native English speakers refer to people who did not acquire it as the first language for the lack of better alternatives. Okay, thank you. I think that's all from me. Thank you, Pak Mateus. Good evening. Ibu nak tarik kot sejang. Krek!